Okay, I think we're live. If you guys can hear me in the chat, go ahead and say hello. Ziggy looks like Ziggy's here. And there might be a delay here, so hopefully this will work out here. At least it shows I'm live. How's everybody doing this fine Sunday? At least it's nice and at least it's sunny here in Kansas. How's it over there in uh in uh, Orlando, Colin? You know, it is nice and thunderstormy. It's a it's a nice uh Nice Florida, Sunday evening. nice, nice Florida Sunday very, very evening. Very central Florida. Yeah. yeah, yeah, liquid sunshine, you know. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's say Yehunda, hi, hi Yehunda, how are you doing? We got a couple people. Just wait a few minutes to let people in here. Um, thanks everybody for joining the live stream. Um, and if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the like button to get the likes up there. Help with the YouTube algorithm. And I guess before we get into today's topics, I might as well talk about some of the status updates of, you know, the channel. You saw, many of you may have seen that I already have a clips, uh, so not a clips, but a uh, video over Capstone I released last week, kind of going over the mission. Uh, tomorrow, I plan on having a video over the Commercial Lunar Payload Services program about all of the uncrewed precursor missions that NASA plans to take, uh, well, it's commercial companies, but it's uh, the, with NASA payloads, that will be landing on the moon over the next couple of years. And uh, and after that is a lot of a lot of Artemis 1 content cuz it seems like Artemis 1 is is happening. That's this is not a drill. Artemis 1 is happening. Uh Yohunda says uh, happening. what do you uh, think Firefly supply what do you think of Firefly supplying the first stage for Antares? We'll get to that. That's one of the things we'll be talking about. <laughs> we will get thing. to that. <laughs> That's a, yeah. So anyway, I, you know, when I getting getting into this uh, today's topics, when I was doing the show prep today, I was like, "What happened this week? Did anything really happen this week?" Then I completely forgot about the Antares, uh, the Antares news. I was so busy working on some of these videos. Uh, I even wrote a story about Antares earlier this week, and I just completely <laughs> forgot about it. <laughs> so run it to one, really. Yeah. Ah, uh, so anyway, Colin, how are you doing? I'm great, Eric. How are you yeah. doing, man? Yeah, go ahead and tell everybody how, if you want to, you know, uh, how your week's been on if you want. So, yeah, no, my, my week's been great. Uh, I I just uh, you know kind of kind of big personal news on my end. I, I just I just got engaged. Uh, so you know, I just proposed to my girlfriend uh, this this last week. Thank you, thank you, appreciate yep. it. Congratulations. Uh, we did it in front of the uh, returning returning booster and uh, drone ship just read the instructions. So I'm, that was uh, kind of a cool moment. You know, if cool I thought moment, of that, we could have so, uh, we could have included pictures of that on the show. I didn't think about that either, yeah, but it's uh, fine. you know, if you well, it, you'll see it's on. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, I tell him. Yeah. I tell him to force. You can you can point at your Twitter handle if you want. We've got our we've got our Twitter. Oops, right, down right here. around here, right the Twitter handles. Right here. So, yeah, there we go. <laughs> that way we don't have to keep reading them out loud and give it, tell you guys how. Yeah, to there you go. So. There you go. <laughs> uh, uh, Yohunda says, which rocket do you like better, SLS or Starship? Uh, I can't speak for Colin, but I think he's probably going to have the same opinion as me. I like them both. I think they're both good for different reasons. Yep, hundred percent. You said it best, Eric. Yeah, uh, they're they're both they're both exciting rockets that we are seeing in development. Uh, they're both really great testaments to the uh, the different types of technology that we're seeing and the different um, developmental uh, styles that we see between NASA and SpaceX. So yeah, I absolutely completely agree with you. Both rockets are awesome. We are definitely Team Space here, and uh, it's mm -hmm. so exciting to see these rockets mm -hmm. um, start to take shape. Really. <clears throat> Oh yeah, and uh, there's also some Starship news in today's uh, today's uh, live show. So I guess we'll go ahead and get started a little bit there. Uh, I guess the first news is um, Lucas on Discord actually brought this to my attention. I totally didn't. I totally missed it. But apparently, the Gagayan Gaganyan spacecraft, which is India's crewed spacecraft that they're working on, um, actually performed the Indian uh, the India Indian Space Research Organization actually performed a static fire test on their launch abort motor. Apparently, it was only about a six-second test. I'm going to see if I can show you a picture here. Um, here's a picture of their six-second test there. Uh, I don't think they actually had video, although it looks like there's video here, but I think the uh, IS, um, ISRO um, website actually just threw a screenshot of whatever their player was. So <laughs> it was a very simple test, but it doesn't need to go very far. It doesn't need to be... Um, doesn't need to burn very long to get away from the spacecraft. Just a few seconds is all you need to get away from a failing, a failing spacecraft. But that's what they were testing. They've already done a number of tests on this spacecraft. It's, for those unaware, um, it's 
a small spacecraft. It kind of in many ways resembles, uh, at least the capsule itself resembles the uh, kind of crew dragon in many ways. Yeah, um, a bit, a little bit. A little bit. Um, it's about three and a half meters wide and about um, three, three, three and a half meters tall. Um, they've done a number of tests on the spacecraft over the years. I think it was in December 2014. They had a reentry test with a boilerplate. I think they also did a pad abort test in July of 2018. Um, but as far as the smoke and fire portion, that's kind of all they've had uh, until as of, as of late. They had, like I said, they had this test here. Um, they're looking at their first orbital flight test of an uncre uncrewed uh, version of this, which I, by the way, could hold one to three Indian astronauts. Um, they're looking at sometime in the middle part of next year, although that could be delayed, and that's no shame on anybody. The space flight is hard, and things take time. And if they perform, I mean, look at Starliner, you know, <laughs> they, they still have a flown crew. Different reasoning, though. <laughs> um, but they have, they want to have their first orbital, uh, uncrewed flight test by the middle of next year, and their first, and a second orbital flight test, possibly about six months after that. So if that happens late next year, maybe early 2024, and then after that, sometime in 2024, they'll have their first crewed flight test. So India might be the fourth independent nation to successfully put people into Earth orbit in the next couple of years. So we'll have, of course, um, the Soviet Union slash Russia and the United States back in the 60s, then China in the early 2000s, and then India. So that's really the news there. There's not a whole lot going on uh, other than that, other than that information. I don't think they, and if somebody wants to uh, add to that in the chat, um, if they know more information, reading Ziggy here, um, 8.34 meters time. Oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> I'll read that in a minute, uh, Ziggy. So anyway, yeah, it's exciting to see more more human spaceflight players. So you'll have, oh, it's just kind of crazy to think about it. And then in the coming years, right now we've got Crew Dragon, we've got, Starliner coming online. We've got Orion, an uh, uncrewed flight test in a couple of weeks, and then uh, maybe two weeks. <laughs> um, and then a, a crewed flight test in a couple of years. Um, and then after, and then we got Soyuz, we've got Shenzhou. What am I missing? I know I'm missing something. We said our capsules. Uh, we said, yeah. And, okay, and then this Soyuz. spacecraft right here, maybe yeah. Dream, Dream right. Chaser in a couple of years we, might be crewed, but yeah. you know. <laughs> not not so, out of the question. Definitely yeah, not out so of the I mean, who knows? So it really, this decade really is kind of, you're, we're seeing a, definitely an S curve of human space flight. It's really increasing really yeah. fast. It's it's really exciting. But yeah, that's about good on India for getting that, um, getting that test done. And we'll be looking at their career with great interest to to quote the, the to quote the, quote the <laughs> meme from that quote. famous space <laughs> opera <laughs> so, uh, uh yohinda uh when do you think starship will fly when do you think we'll fly with people well that actually brings us on to our next topic which is about raptor 2 there is some raptor 2 news out there and as for those who do not know raptor 2 is the engine that um will be powering SpaceX's Starship and uh, Super Heavy Starship into orbit. Um, Colin, do you want to take on, take this one? Yeah, absolutely. So what we saw basically, I believe it was on October, or I'm sorry, August 11th, and I'll if I'm not mistaken. put on a nice, beautiful uh, photo of, of it right here. Perfect, beautiful. So what you're seeing here on your screen right now is uh, just what we said. That is a full duration static fire test of one of the Raptor 2 engines. Now, the full duration uh, does not necessarily mean the full duration of how long that engine is going to burn in flight. It was just the full duration of how long that test was. In this case, the test lasted 20 seconds. Um, so they're testing different chamber pressures and things of that nature um, and on, on the engine itself, um, which is actually kind of cool to see because um, I, as you remember kind of recently, I believe it was kind of the beginning of the year, um, you know, Elon did kind of write a, a, a an open letter that was uh, that was you know sent to SpaceX and the employees of SpaceX saying, hey, we're really experiencing some production issues with the Raptor 2 engines. Uh, of course, famously, this was said that you know if not solved, this could end up bankrupting the company. Um, but it is good to see that Raptor 2 engine actually in action um, and lasting that full 20 seconds. Uh, so it's this is this is definitely good news for Starship. Um, and you know, I, I'm not sure really what the next steps are at this point. They haven't 
they haven't really said, uh, you know, when, when these things will roll out. I'm not sure exactly what engine it was, but, um, you know, obviously. It's kind of hard to tell. This, it's kind of tough to tell, uh, you know, just from this photo alone. And they didn't, they didn't release a press kit or anything or, or anything of that nature. Yeah. Um, We've been very spoiled visually when it comes to SpaceX. We have. But we, we don't, really have. we still don't have a lot of details um, other than whenever Elon makes a, you know, a press conference and has a, yeah. as a, a night out on, on Starbase. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. either way, it's good news. You know, it's, it's good to see, it's good to see the engine up and burning. Um, and I in guess a good way. all we can say really is in a good way, in a good <laughs> way, of course. Um, you know, more to come with these engines. Um, yeah. And this actually comes, so. this whole small testing, ca- this testing campaign comes just what, two, three, maybe a month. Um, yeah. As Ziggy was saying, two or three, uh, about a month uh, after there was a yeah. big boom. Was it a month or was it three weeks? Yeah. I don't know. I'm losing track of time. This summer's been the, it's been a black hole of time. Quick. <laughs> I, I mean, it was quick. Anytime, anytime you have an anomaly of that nature, um, you know, really you can, you can expect a delay of at least like six plus months. Okay. In um, a traditional so aerospace, like yeah. Happen. Yeah. And, and, you know, traditionally, uh, so, so to see something like that happen and then, you know, they're back up on the t- test stand doing a, a whole duration static fire. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah. We still don't know what was damaged um, a month ago from sure. all those engines. However, uh, yeah, Ziggy said a month or thereabout. But I was important to note this image that you see here on screen. There's only 20 of 33 engines on there, only the outer ring of engines, um, which don't gimbal. So that was probably the easiest engines they can yeah. make sure they're inspected properly. And there's nothing, nothing crazy to worry about in terms of you know hydraulics for moving the engines. So they probably that's probably the reason why they just threw those um, 20 out there and got it back onto the test on um, the test or sorry not the test hand of the launch pad in order to continue their test campaign. There was a I think it was last week, there was also a, uh, uh, they also at the same, on one of the same days, they were testing an engine, or at least a spin-up test, a prime, uh, the uh, turbo prompt spin-up test, I believe, as well as a similar one on the Starship, Ship 24, at the same, well, not literally at the same time, but they were they had both tank farms with methane and oxygen going at the, or at least oxygen going at the same time. So they were doing, you know, back-to-back, they're just, they're, um, what's the phrase, they're, uh, walking and chewing gum so at the same yeah. time <laughs> so it's it's great to see what apparently according to elon musk the next step and they've already taken this out and taken it to back to the uh the high bay so it's off that pad now let me see if i can get a picture of that because i i know there's a picture out there i know i've seen it um i think elon himself might have tweeted something of the uh of the booster being back at the yeah that's what i'm looking for you, as you guys can see me live doing all this here ignore his memes uh, oh, there it is, right here. Oh, there oh, that's loud. We don't need the sound. There you go. So it's back there. They're installing the Center 13 engines, which are the ones that actually gimbal. And uh, they did not give a timeline for when it would be back at the orbital launch mount. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in the next week or so. But, you know, that's just yeah. my, my guess. We don't know. Um <clears throat> And for those of you that don't know, um, you know what what Derek is referring to is uh, gimbling motors or gimbling oh, engines. Oh, thank you. Um, those are basically engines that are going to be swiveling, and that's essentially what controls, um, basically points the rocket in the right direction. It keeps the rocket stable um, because the it... rocket does not have aero surfaces like wings or something like that, like an airplane. Uh, no ailerons or anything like that. The only way for a rocket to essentially steer itself uh, while it's launching is by use of those movable engines and thrust vectoring control. So. I mean, sometimes there are fins on rockets, and depending on the design. There are but... fins on rockets, yes. Uh, something like this, however, <laughs> Not uh, this you know, one. being as big as it one. is. And, now, yeah, this now one is, on yeah. its way back down, it's got grid fins that will help help yeah. steer it a little bit. And I think it's got yeah. some, uh, I don't know what the term is, a little... Ex- if you know the better term, the term for these or not, I don't know the term, but these little uh, notches here, on the side, if you can see in aviation, they're called turbulators. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it, it, it could be something completely, yeah. Completely different. I, I think it's supposed uh, to help you know. the glide slope, basically. I mean, yeah. it's still going mostly yeah. straight down, but but yeah. I think it's supposed to help a little bit with it. Uh, anything to help a little bit of extra delta V, it's <laughs> more absolutely, yeah. And that also, this whole testing comes what, um, a week, it seems like. I don't know. Again, like I said, it's a black hole of time out there. I think it was, uh, the um, hydraulics on the catch arm right here, the the, the chopsticks, this yeah. big black thing, just blew. You know, Sprayed I mean, I, when I say blue, <laughs> I don't mean explosion blue. Just you know, some some cap popped off and just 
it was a nice mist of hydraulic fluid while they were rolling this out to the pad. So I guess that's taking And luckily there was no booster on the, uh, you know, the, the <laughs> yeah. platforms at the time. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that would be crazy. So um, Yehunda was saying, when do you think Starship will fly and when do you think it will fly with people? That is, one of them is the easier question than the other. Let's put it yeah. that way. I think Starship, in its very basic form, the forms we're seeing now, will fly this year. Is that in September? Is that in December? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, accidents happen, testing issues happen. They realize they, you know, they need to get, you know, licensing from the FAA. F- yeah, the FAA. All these things take time. Is it happening this month? No. That's all I can tell you is it's not happening this month. <laughs> but, um, but it will fly. And it will fly, in its, at least in the very basic configuration, which is, you know, this first stage of Super Heavy and ba- a very basic upper stage, which we still don't know for sure if it's going to have any um, Starlink version 2s in there or not. Um, we don't know. For the yeah. first orbital flight test, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, don't, we yeah. don't know yet. They so, haven't confirmed that. I, 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 I think... would imagine that they probably do, uh, but that's, again, that's just complete speculation. The, the way they roll over there at SpaceX, it feels like they've got, they've got, multiple paths they can take at any one moment if they want to pivot yeah they can um yeah so and that's what we've seen that before you know they decided they build these uh, uh you know booster two booster one and they decided you know what this one's going to orbit no no maybe not maybe we'll do booster three to orbit no let's make it booster four you know or yeah. now booster seven the ballet. <laughs> so yeah. yeah so it's just the way it's the way things work over it's just it's not any it's not wrong compared to what NASA does. It doesn't mean NASA's wrong. It's just no. different. They, they do yeah, things different. in a different way. And in some ways, it does seem like it's a little better because I could easily make a case for, you know, this is a personal opinion here. I love NASA. Um, and I, at the risk of sounding fanboyish, because I'm not trying to be fanboy, I'm just stating the reality. And I've said this to you, Colin, the Starship launch tower. How quickly did that thing go? The, the one here in Boca Chica, how quickly did that go up in a matter of six months, seven months? Granted, they had a lot of test work after that, to be fair, but the actual structure of it went up relatively quick. And they're doing the same thing in Florida, but yet, it what was it? From the, at least, heck, even modifying the, yeah. star, star, um, the SLS uh, mobile launcher from Ares 1 to SLS took forever in a... The whole cost of that thing's well over a billion dollars. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on those numbers, but um, yeah, I, I don't think SpaceX spent a billion dollar per launch tower here. <laughs> and this, no. new, and they're building no. another mobile launcher um, for the, an upgraded SLS. And to be fair, I am a supporter of SLS. I'm just not a supporter of how much it costs for the mobile launcher. Something you would think would be relatively inexpensive. Really, it, I don't know. I'm not a. I'm, that I'm not a, done before. To be I'm not fair. an engineer. Uh, Maybe there's something I don't know. Yeah. Don't know about. If somebody's in the industry can tell me something about it, great. I just don't. I, I see it, two things that are relatively similar. That take one takes a lot longer and a lot more money than the other, and I'm like, what yeah. is SpaceX doing differently versus NASA when it comes to the launch f- uh, infrastructure? And I don't know. And maybe it's bad contracting. Maybe it's maybe it's cost plus. Maybe it needs to be a fixed firm price. Um, it could I, be I don't a know. mix of all of those, Derek. Yeah. I, I mean, and and I, I know, I mean, obviously the MLP uh, on NASA's side. I mean, it's it's got a lot of umbilicals, a lot of hydraulics, yes, a lot yes, of uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of different things that, that go into it. So I mean, there's I don't want to say there's more moving parts than Starships. Uh, that's that's a fair that. point. That is a fair point. So. But, but but I do think there, you know, I mean, it's it's it is it is a little bit different, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's it is one moves, different. one doesn't. I get that. Although exactly. the, all the crawler's yeah. the one that moves, to be fair, but. Sure. Um, Sure. So, I don't know. It's it's it'll be one for the history books for hi- historians in the future to tell us why, I guess. But Absolutely. <laughs> to, to be fair, I still believe both at least for right now need to be launching. And so that goes to the second part of Hunda's question. Do you when do you think it will fly with people? Not anytime soon. I mean, even in the most optimistic sense, I cannot see it fly, that system flying. Now, when I say flying people, I'm talking from the earth to the space. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, I think we'll see people on that, uh, on a Starship variant, Lunar Starship, you know, within the next five years. But yeah. actually launching people into orbit from the ground, I do not see that anytime soon. Uh, well, to it's... put it in, into perspective, you know, if you think about the Falcon 9 system, you know, that rocket flew 80 plus times before the system itself was confident enough 
to say, hey, we're, we're good to go. Let's, let's go ahead and fly humans on board. That's a lot of flights. You know, this thing hasn't made one orbital flight yet. Yes. Um, not saying that, not, I, I, and that's not me knocking the program at all. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very big system um, with a lot of moving parts mm -hmm. um, with no launch escape system. Mm -hmm. It does not, uh, you know, and there, are no very plan, there are no plans for that as of right now. There's no plans for that right now, uh, which which is very very non-standard um, for for not only industry but 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 any kind of crewed system. Um, so a lot has to go right uh, before SpaceX, NASA, whoever is confident enough to trust the system to fly humans. I do think we're going to see it happen in our lifetime. Oh I yeah, don't see it yeah. happening within the timeline. You know that. Uh, you know, I, I mean, some of the leaders. I mean, Elon obviously has a very optimistic timeline, and that's fine. But like you said, I absolutely think we're going to see the um the lunar version of this uh before yeah. before we see and that's not to say around to the space yeah <laughs> yeah exactly that's not to say i don't want to see people flying in it i think i, oh, I want to see it not. happen right i mean right. it's got to happen it, we can't just launch people in small rockets and just use everything else for the big rockets um yahunda says yeah. uh, i gotta go to bed for the night uh, it's 9 p.m have a good night uh, and i guess i'll see it see you next time thanks for joining us yahunda thanks for joining um but yeah, I hope I answered your questions there a little bit. But I would hope to be—I—I I, I will be glad to be wrong on that on that situation. Maybe, maybe in the next couple of years, Starship will once it gets off in its feet. Because I want to say, Starship orbital flight and SLS first orbital flight, two totally different mission profiles. Yeah. One is practically ready to go hardware. One is still early phases testing. One is probably more comparable to. I don't, I don't want to say Ares One because that's probably too far back, but, but because uh, Ares One was just a stick in an upper in a in, a, in some metal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ares One, Ares One X, I should say, the Ares One X launch, which was in two thousand nine. Um, but uh, I would say the first orbital launch of Starship is probably close to like the first orbital launch of Orion. Would you agree absolutely. with me on that one? EFT one, which absolutely. happened in 2014. That's yeah, a better comparison. So even in a, you know, there's like who's going to make it first, SLS or Orion uh, or um, uh, or Starship? At this point, it's looking like SLS. But even if it were the other way around, again, like I said, they're two totally different mission profiles. Um, one can fail; the other one can't. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. So, well, and, and I mean, if you look at the expected cadence between the two, that uh, I mean, really, SpaceX, obviously, you know, they have some some pretty pretty high hopes as far as what their cadence wants to, is going to be. But mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they're they're really looking to fly. I mean, look, what is it like? Thirty six flights a year at starting least. off, or, or something. I mean, you know, at least you know. So it's. I mean, it's, if you if you look at a flight for a, a moon landing using Starship, that's at least. What four, five, five yeah. at least five yeah. um, in a short in a short period of time, <laughs> right, right uh, per year, or or per whenever they use it because they won't NASA won't use Starship for every mission. Um, I still think this is not to go off on too much on a tangent here. <laughs> I still think NASA's best bet or the Artemis program's best bet is to use a smaller lander regularly and use the Starship for either large cargo or large habitation and then just ferry the, and just ferry the smaller Absolutely. one up and down um yeah i have my own i think it's easier i think it's it's was more cost effective i think it's safer personally i mean that's, yes. that's you know yes. I, i'm a fan of i'm a fan of smaller landers uh in a traditional configuration for re-entry and mm -hmm. landing on the moon um not that i don't trust the starship system and believe in the starship system you know i do think it's fully capable um there's just a lot of moving parts yeah to it. it's um, going to be really exciting kind of it Very, is going to be really yeah. exciting. Excitement guaranteed. Yes. Um, I just, it's scary because we're putting human lives on, on the line here. <laughs> Not yet, but right. soon. And that's always soon. going to be scary. So yeah. anyway, unless there's anything else you guys want to talk about, about Raptor 2 and Starship, the testing recently, unless I missed something. Um, I'm going to turn this off here. Anything else you want to talk about on this particular topic? That's all I got here. That was, uh, you know. <clears throat> like I said, more to come. More to come. We'll more just, to come. Uh, There's always more to come. See what happens. Yeah. So the big news um, from ISS logistics standpoint would be um, earlier this week. Gosh, that was that just this Monday? Gosh. Um, so it was to back up here. Yeah. To back up here, when Russia invaded Ukraine, 
then I know this is a weird topic to pivot to. <laughs> when Russia invaded Ukraine, one of the uh, amongst all, obviously the biggest concern is obviously the, the people and all the devastation going on there because because of the Russian military. But there were a lot of space casual uh, space if things affected that things of, it affected the space industry quite a bit. And one of those things is the Antares rocket. The Antares rocket is built by Northrop Grumman, and its first stage is built. The booster, it's the actual tanks are built. I forgot the name of the country, uh, the name of the co company, but are built in Ukraine, central Ukraine. In the engines, there are two RD-181 engines that are, of course, Russian. Well, because of the invasion, that means that those are no longer available. <laughs> in fact, Northrop Grumman only has two uh, enough in inventory for two more launches of the Antares in the 230 plus configuration. And so the upper stage of Antares is actually built by Northrop Grumman. It's a solid rocket motor called Castor. 30 XL. And then of course, on top of that is the Cygnus spacecraft that resupplies the International Space Station. The next launch is going to be in October, and there'll be another one sometime in the first half of 2023. And then that ver that version of, of uh, Antares can no longer launch because of logistical supply reasons. Um, that being said, Northrop Grumman and Firefly Aerospace, which I did not expect, have announced they are collaborating to build a new first stage for the Antares rocket and called the Antares 330 series. Um, 330 because the Castor XL30. So it'll still have the same upper stage. So imagine, at least as of right now, the renders. Let me see if I can pull up a render here real quick. I'm sure there's a render somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, while I'm doing this, Colin, if you don't mind talking real quick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, uh, add, absolutely. Add to what so, I just said so there. Yeah, so so basically, you know what? As Derek said, you know this is this is a really cool partnership between um, between Northrop and Firefly, um, and you know they didn't they didn't really specify the details as far as you know with costs or anything like that. There were some details. Um, but this is a really cool thing. Where, where, where there where, as as in, in that in that to that to that sense, I can't you know I can't really. I'll get there. I just, I'm just um, trying to find. I'm just trying to find a picture yeah. at the moment. So so you know. All of this to say, this is really to keep this system up and running. The Cygnus uh, resupply system. Uh, the Cygnus spacecraft, you know, was developed by Northrop Grumman. So obviously, you know, it's a very versatile system, and I'm going to speak to that because um, what they've also announced in the meantime is that the Cygnus spacecraft is going to be flying on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket there, there uh, in 2023 and 2024, um, which is which is really cool. It really speaks to the diversity of this spacecraft uh, that Northrop has built. Um, the Cygnus spacecraft has flown on an Atlas V rocket back in 2015 and 2016. It's obviously flown on the Antares, the Antares rocket, and then it'll be flying on a uh, SpaceX Falcon 9. Uh, so that's really kind of cool to to see the cadence kind of up and coming, and then to see the uh, partnership with Firefly coming up um, here a little bit shortly after that. There we go. <clears throat> so yeah, here we go. There's the there's the uh, their render, I should say. This is definitely a render. Yeah. It's basically the upper stage of Antares with a new first stage. And the first stage, right now, Firefly Aerospace is working on their Alpha rocket, which is a much smaller rocket. Think of it similar. I think it's similar and similar-ish in size to Rocket Lab's uh, Electron rocket. It's yeah, got that's a great way to put it. Is it? Uh, I forgot how many engines. It's Firefly. If you're a if you're a fan of the Firefly series you'll probably appreciate all this. Um, if not, go watch Firefly. Why haven't you watched Firefly, Firefly yet? <laughs> um, <clears throat> have you watched it, Colin? You know, I have not. Uh, oh, I, I know, I know, it's, it's I know, all, it's I know. All, yeah, I know. But you've heard of it at least, so. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. so it's a very good show. But the it, I forgot how many of the, uh, the Alpha has on their first stage, but they have their, uh, their Reaver engines. And Reavers, of course, are named after the... Uh, how would you how would you describe Reavers? Just kind of they're kind of the not really the antagonists, but they're just kind of like think of them like more like I don't know zo space zombies in many way like angry space zombies because of a, what ended up being because of a failed experiment um, on some faraway planet. That's the basic. I'm probably getting part of it wrong. Point is their engines are named <laughs> <laughs> their engines are named Reaver, and uh, the new version is based, which is interesting. Their new version was supposed to be based on their beta rocket. But they're, they've um, now just named it the Next Generation uh, media, I, MLV, which I don't know if it stands for something in particular, Medium Launch Vehicle, Medium Lift Vehicle. I think Medium Launch. 
Well, yeah. yeah. So they used to call it beta. They just updated their website. So it's no longer called beta. But they'll have seven engines called Miranda, which is the planet that that failed experiment happened on in the in the show. Kind of a little nod there. Kind of neat. Yeah, it's cool. anyway. Point is, it's liquid oxygen and rocket grade kerosene as the um, as the uh, fuel. And so relatively similar in terms of uh, pad oh, infrastructure, course. pad infrastructure, and everything like that. So this is not the details of Antares. This is the details for their next generation vehicle. Uh, but Antares um, will still use seven Miranda engines at the base, and some it's the first stage will be at least a little bit wider than their current first stage. But because of all this, they'll have a lot more payload uh, capacity to orbit. They didn't say how much, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see a new version of Cygnus in the couple in the next couple of years as well. Maybe even an extended Cygnus. Oh, absolutely. So it's it's going to allow for a lot more up mass for cargo to the International Space Station. And I know another a number of people have said this, including Scott Manley and, if, and I think uh, T.J. Cooney of I Need More Space has also said this. Kind of wouldn't surprise me if this is kind of the first stage of Northrop Grumman possibly buying Firefly Alpha. We'll see what happens in yeah. the future there. Firefly Alpha is also working on their own lander for the Commercial Lunar Payload Services program called Blue Ghost. So they've got a lot of, uh, a lot of apparently they've got enough money now <laughs> from between NASA, Northrop Grumman. <laughs> yeah. Northrop, at this point, Northrop Grumman's probably not going to let them fail. So worst case scenario, they're going to buy them just so they have the material. But So sure. yeah, it's exciting. Firefly Alpha is a small, up and, uh, small company up and coming. I don't remember all the details about the company. But their Alpha rocket, like I said, their small rocket, launches uh, out of the West Coast right now. Um, oh gosh, was it the old Delta II launch pad over there at Vandenberg? I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah. I believe so it is. their first launch was last September. It kind of went not well, but it's a first launch. Apparently, a few seconds. Got, second, off, the, got, got off the pad. It got off the pad. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ziggy says. Uh, Oh yeah, he's yeah Ziggy. Yeah, that's absolutely right. The, that company did the uh, the uh, oh gosh, I can't pronounce it. The Ukrainian company did Ares uh, one ten through two thirty plus first stage. That's true. Um, and hopefully Antares does commercial launches instead of just CRS missions. But it's still cool. Yeah, I agree, Ziggy. And I think that's yeah. Northrop's plan as well. Um, actually, I don't know if their plan is more commercial. They're not, they're probably still trying to tap into the uh, national defense side of things but we'll see where it goes yeah i would imagine i would imagine in the near term at least yeah they wanted but... to build um omega or omega i yeah. don't know however you pronounce it with a capital o and a capital a at the end of the name really weird uh, they wanted to build that a couple of years ago and they were trying to court the uh, national uh, D department of defense to give them money to build that their well. all solid rocket booster rocket and it didn't work out and so they canceled it so <laughs> At least there'll be a contract for NASA. I don't know what Northrop's yeah. long-term rocket plans are, but as long as they've got, as long as the international space, as long as there, as long as there are space stations to be serviced, I think Antares and Cygnus will still be around. Um, yeah, I agree. But what was I going to say here? Let me um, turn this off. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Was there anything else I missed on that particular topic here? No, I don't think so. I think just, you know, the, the fact that Antares is kind of getting new life uh, yeah. relatively quickly, obviously, oh. uh, it's a big deal. And then obviously, with, uh, you know, the deal with the quiet. Yeah, we don't know how much it's going to cost or how long it's going to take. But yeah. the fact that Northrop also is purchasing three um, Falcon 9 rockets to for three Cygnus launches um, in 2023 and 2024 leads me to believe it's probably going to be at least 2024, maybe 2025 yeah. before Antares 3 flies. So that's probably your basic time, statement. your basic timeline right there. Um, but yeah, it's exciting. We a lot of new rockets. We got a lot of rocket retirements yeah. that we've had in the last couple of years, and a lot of new rockets. That it's it's just a um, a reshuffle. one for one replacement it too. Kind of awesome. is. It really is. You know, you yeah. have the Delta IV medium that's retired. Um, we're gonna have the Delta IV heavy that's gonna be retiring soon. Atlas is almost. Uh, I mean, we still probably got five years left of Atlas, but yeah, but that's going. We'll see, we still, we'll see Atlas till the end of the decade. Yeah, right? probably depending on things go. But we have Vulcan coming up maybe this year, maybe yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah, um, fingers crossed for Vulcan. Yeah, I mean they've got the engines now, <laughs> in Vulcan. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, lots of cool things going on in, the, in that regarding. I mean, rocket. Everything seems to be interconnected too. So we Antares. Cygnus, uh, if Cygnus fly, keeps flying, we'll have better versions of 
cargo vehicles for future space stations. And maybe, and of course, Cygnus is based on the Lunar Gateway. Or, sorry, the Lunar Gateway is yeah. based on Cygnus. So yeah. at least the first modules are. I mean, even the yeah. international ones look to be the basic same size stuff. Anyway, I'm just rambling now. It's, it's really cool. I'm excited about it. So anything else on that particular topic? I don't think so. No, it's, it's, this is, uh, to me, it's, it's very exciting news. Um, so it's, it's great to see Antares getting new life. Okay. Anybody in the chat have any other questions regarding uh, what we've gone over so far? Because the next step, step, step is probably, I've seen this before, but I don't think Colin has the press kit for Artemis 1. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, seems silly, but there's a lot of neat stuff in the press kit if you're into that no, stuff. It's, it's... And with Artemis 1, just a hair over two weeks away. I mean, oh man, it's really happening. I mean, rollout is this yeah, week. And just opening so, up the, the press kit, man. I, I have chills right now. Just, just yeah. it's uh, knowing knowing how close we are, uh, and and how, and this might actually happen. I mean, they they really are 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 thinking about doing this at the end of the month. Um, from from all reports that we have so far, fingers crossed. It looks like this thing might actually uh might actually take place, or they they may at least give it their best shot here at the end of the month. I mean, it sounds like processing's at least on schedule, if not a little ahead of schedule. I think they finished yeah. their flight termination system testing. They got an extension from the Eastern range because before the flight, the batteries for the flight termination system, which is for those who don't know, the FTS flight termination system is what is used to blow up the rocket. If it goes off course, it's there for safety of everybody on the ground and in the air. So um, yeah, hopefully that won't be used, but the batteries still need to be working in the event that it does need to be used. And the batteries were only certified for 20 days from the moment they plugged them in inside the vehicle assembly building. But they got permission from the range to extend that to 25 days. So that's exciting, which means they'll be able to go Great. all the way through um, September 5th for this current launch window. So these first the first launch attempt will be on the 29th, the second launch attempt will be on the 2nd, and the third launch attempt will be on the 5th. And as of right now, there are no showstoppers that I'm aware of None industry insiders, I don't think, are aware. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think there's anything sh stopping this. Once it rolls, I mean, then we have at least an 11 day countdown, so to speak. A pad flow is not a countdown, the pad flow. The countdown, yeah. I think, is like what is it a four day countdown or a three, uh, two, three day countdown? Yeah, L, an L minus. Yeah, and, and, and you know, kind of on that note, there's, there's, this is a new system mm -hmm. uh, that obviously has never flown before with a lot of moving parts that happen within that long a countdown window uh there's a lot that has to to go right um so you know while we're obviously shooting for august 29th we're really hoping for august 29th there's still a lot that could you know potentially <clears throat> push this but you know i i think with with the the extension from the range there's a really good shot that this thing might fly at the end of the month there's the it's happening meme you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> 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 it's it really is it's it's quite exciting the only thing that i can yeah. think of right now that might be a, a uh dampen this a little bit no pun intended is uh weather weather or yeah. maybe a wayward boat although i think it's so high so visible i don't know if a wayward boat will get in the way but you never know it's happened before so it's, it's florida it's yeah. florida <laughs> <clears throat> so but yeah i mean right now the uh, granted we're still two weeks out so it doesn't really matter what the weather looks like right now but there are at least I checked yesterday. Anyway, it does not look like there are any uh, tropical systems forming in the in the Atlantic Basin because it's we're peak hurricane right season now, right no. now, and there's been it's been quiet. Yeah. So yeah, the, it's uh, the there's a, a Bahama high right now, which <laughs> basically means that there's a, a high pressure system kind of in that uh, in, in that area of the Bahamas, uh, typically where where tropical waves roll through, and that's kind of just been keeping everything at bay. Uh, we've had you know, Sahara dust kind of keeping mm -hmm. everything at bay as well. So you, you really have kind of have that kind of dampening that, uh, or I shouldn't say dampening, but yeah. drying up that, yeah. that area. So. Maybe Mother Nature's on Fingers SLS's crossed. side. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and you know, it's, and it's launching it's in the morning. You mentioned that. It's launching in the morning. There shouldn't be it's any. It's launching in the morning, which is great yeah. uh, for, for Florida weather. That's that's really kind of your best um, best window, really. Um, but even the, even the weather commit criteria are very interesting. Um, I think something that, that is 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 interesting to, to note is, is the uh, the wind limitations um, exceeding a range of 29 knots through 39 knots um, up to 457 feet, which I I just think is kind of interesting. It's 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 
a little bit higher than than I would I would almost think. Mm. But you know, I have a question though, and I don't know if you know the answer. If somebody does in the chat, let me know. <clears throat> when uh, there's obviously going to be a roll program. The shuttle roll program, at least visually, was pretty dramatic because of the orbiter on the side. But how quickly yeah. is it gonna is it gonna start rolling right when it clears the pad like the shuttle did? Is it gonna be, for rel- relatively speaking anyway, aggressive an aggressive roll real quick like the shuttle? Again, it was more pronounced with the shuttle because of the orbiter. But yeah, is it um, gonna like within I about mean, five second, ten seconds, however long the roll was, like the shuttle is it the same type of roll? It's a good question. I I, I mean I, I don't. Uh... I don't imagine it being as as dramatic uh, because and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I believe you know shuttle used a combination of, of its of its main engine gimbals mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and ailerons as well. I yeah. believe it just used everything Possibly. that it had to 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 turn it. Um, so that's a great question. Um, you know, and, and obviously obviously there's a little bit different. You know, with you know shuttle is obviously the, the crew compartment is a lot more dramatic it's literally on one side of the yeah, rocket yeah that's what uh, i meant by you know, it. so you have your radio communications <laughs> coming from this side when you're on the ground and then you know you you flip it over to your roll program and mm-hmm. then that's where all your communication is happening on this side that's yep. why they would always call out roll program to it's basically a comm check yeah um you know to make sure that your radios are working on the other side of that roll um so and it is, I, I don't know. That's it is going to roll. It is going to roll heads down, and Orion's facing the same direction yeah. that the shuttle was yeah. in terms of so, the, there's so, a crew compartment. So I think it would still be pretty, pretty gosh darn dramatic. Uh, I mean, you're you're essentially seeing the spacecraft flip over because you know even Falcon Nine, uh, you know, has a has a pitch over program. You can just barely. Tell, yeah, yeah. Well, it's know, also from, from it's, the it's naked a, eye. Yeah, it's a tube though. So. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so. So this. Yeah, that's a good question. I'd love to know the answer. Yeah. Um. I had a thought, and I don't remember what it was. Down. It just flew out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> um. It was talking. It was going to be about the pad. It was about. Oh gosh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, it was going to be interesting. I thought it was going to be interesting. Apparently, not enough. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> um. Role program. What was I going to say? Bear with me. Bear with me. Um, you can keep talking if you want, so we don't have dead air. But <laughs> we talked about communications. We talked about rolling. We talked about ailerons. We talked about gimbling. We talked. Uh... Oh shit! If it, it'll come to me, oh man, that bothers me now because I oh. Mm. It's gonna come to you as soon as we end the stream. Oh, it will. Oh, we'll it post will. in the show notes what that. Note <laughs> <was>. <laughs> yeah, we'll just move on. We'll just move on. I don't want to waste your time with me struggling to remember something. <laughs> so anyway. So here's some details, the press gate, which you haven't seen. Some of it's stuff we already know, although just for people who don't know, the window for launch, on this is all assuming a Monday, August 29th launch. The window is two hours long, 8.33 a.m. to 10.33 a.m., and this is all Eastern time. And the mission duration will be 42 days, 3 hours, and 20 minutes. That's because when it gets into the distant retrograde orbit around the moon, it's essentially going to do a lap and a half around the moon, and... Gosh, I don't remember how many days that ended up being. 12 or 18 days orbiting the, orbiting the moon, something like that. Um, so it's going in the distant retrograde orbit, which means it's... I'm trying to remember what the farthest... I guess it says it down here. It will travel uh, 40,000 miles or 64,000 kilometers beyond the far side of the moon. That is further than any human-rated spacecraft. Any human spacecraft spacecraft designed for humans has ever done. That was even beyond Apollo 13, I think, was the record holder beforehand. There were still crew at Apollo 13, so it won't be the crewed record. But as far as designed for people, it's going pretty far out there. Um, let's see what else we got here. So we've got launch. I'm trying to see here. I there actually was... found something pretty interesting, Derek. If you, if you click on the ascent and mission timeline. Uh, that's probably what I was looking for next here. Uh, ascent and mission timeline. This right here uh right there there we go check out uh stage two the roll program or pitch maneuver where's that uh 563 feet it's that second step there tower clear and initiate roll so it will initiate the roll at least it answers half the question how (laughs) fast will it be who knows that's we don't don't know how quick that that brought back what i wanted to know that brought back what i was going to say we all remember, well, we don't physically remember. Most of us, I don't think there's anybody on this stream who's old enough. Well, there might be somebody old enough to remember Apollo. Sorry if I'm outing your age. I apologize. <laughs> but <laughs> I obviously was born well after Apollo. <laughs> but in the footage, you see the Saturn V launching. 
and it looked like it took forever, or some of it was slowed down for dramatic effect, but the actual real-time launch, it took, what was it, 10, 12 seconds to clear the pa- uh, clear the tower? Yeah. It was. Yeah. It took a long time. The, I don't remember what the thrust-to-weight ratio was, but it was closer to one. Um, it was. This one, uh, just like Shuttle, is I think it's like a one and a half thrust-to-weight ratio. So it's going to li- uh, probably launch off the pad just as fast as the space shuttle did. So it's going to yeah. get up and go. Those, that's the solid yeah. rocket motors will do that. <laughs> so it's going to be quite excited to see. It's, I'm just imagining what that's going to look like. But yeah, the roll <laughs> will start at seven seconds. It doesn't say when the roll will end, but I would imagine it's not going to take its sweet time. So no, it's not going to happen before max, or it's not going to happen at max Q. Oh, definitely well not. Before max Q. So I imagine no more uh, than ten seconds. So that's probably similar yeah. to the space shuttle. Then we're going to see very similar to the shuttle roll program, I believe. Yeah, and the shuttle roll program were, were more dramatic, again more dramatic because of the orbiter on the back, on the side. Right. But they were. It was a mm-hmm. more of a roll, if I recall correctly, when they were going more easterly than they were toward the International Space Station. Correct. Or at least that's it looked exactly right. from from the ground point of view, at least. Yeah. So it's going to look. Which is what this is doing. It's going easterly, not toward the inter- International yeah. Space Station. So it's going to look pretty pretty dramatic. <laughs> um, yeah. Man. Might even scare some people who aren't expecting it. <laughs> makes, it me really wonder how, <laughs> makes me wonder how many people were scared when the shuttle did its first roll program for STS-1. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. Oh, man. Imagine. Mm, this is exciting stuff. I'm getting giddy here. It is. So, <laughs> so as you were saying, yeah. So after about... A lot of this is the same basic shuttle profile. So the boosters separates at about just over two minutes. Um, mm-hmm. Launch escape uh, system jettison is about three and a half minutes. Um, Miko, the core stage is eight, almost eight and a half minutes. The crazy thing about this is it's not going to be in a roughly circular orbit like the shuttle was. Um, it's going to be in a highly elliptical orbit. I think what's the high point? I'm sure it says it on here, but it's like a thousand miles by yeah. seventy or or ten. The core is going to dip back into the atmosphere, so it's going to be the upper stage here, if you can see what my mouse is pointing at, that's actually going to do the final orbit insertion burn, if you will. It won't circularize, because that would be a lot of a lot of, a lot lot of of fuel to do that. It'll just get itself just out of, to where it doesn't go back into the atmosphere on the way back down. So, but yeah, um, we'll have a translunar injection within about 90 minutes after launch. I think separation of the spacecraft is about two hours after launch. It's going to be an exciting day. We'll have a spacecraft on the way to the moon within two hours of launch. And, And of course, then there's the uh, CubeSats. There's 10 CubeSats on board um, from various... um, I think it's mostly NASA and university customers. I believe so, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they've got it. Hey, here's the weather criteria. Were you looking at that earlier? I was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You were looking at that. See what's on board. We talked about the CubeSats. You can, we can look more information about the CubeSats if you want. Um, this is a great press kit. Oh, it's uh, great. You know, this is this is so so reminiscent of, of uh, years past. The shuttle days. I mean, you don't get press kits yeah, like this I, anymore. <laughs> no, you, you just um, don't. Uh, I don't even, this I makes don't even, my shuttle heart happy. Yeah, I know. I don't even think we had this much information for the first commercial crew missions. Granted, they weren't taking a lot oh, of board besides didn't. the people. Yeah. So you just, yeah. had, you just had the Astro Bio. But... <laughs> Um, but there are passengers aboard. Um, they are yeah. not human. They are not alive. There are um, one of them is at Commander Munikin Campos, which is an anthropomorphic test dummy. If I am saying that correctly, um, it's got a bunch of data that you for basically a crash test dummy. More advanced than that, probably even. It's a male form, and um, I'm trying to think what all what all it's got on there. It's going to be able to test all kinds of acceleration. I don't think this yeah. one has radiation. G indicators. G indicators. This one may um, or may not have radiation yeah. indicators or not because these two, um, which are named, see if I can find the name here. It's, I, uh, yeah, here it says Helga and Zohar are female uh, test devices called phantoms, basically because it's just the torso pretty much um, with the female profile. One of them has a radiation vest. Um, I think that one's designed by Israel. And the other one is more, acts as more of a control, and it doesn't have a radiation vest. So it's going to track the radiation from what the astronauts will get all the way out and back to the moon. And if I'm understanding this correctly, this, the um, actual radiation suit, they're wondering or trying to fi- figure out if it could be used instead of finding shelter for solar storms. 
And if, if I'm getting that factually wrong, somebody let me know. But that is what I am un understanding by that. Um, yeah, that's that's really cool, actually. If that's if, if or at least case. at least as extra protection during solar storms or yeah. or something minor. So I'm sure if it's like a huge solar storm, they're still going to try to seek some sort of shelter. But um, and obviously you don't want to wear a radiation vest all the time either. So yeah, it's still fascinating nonetheless. So there's gonna they're gonna be Absolutely. censored galore, and then of course the other thing going on is Callisto which is the Alexa device that is going to the moon. So we can kind of get, uh, I guess, it'll, there'll be a, a microphone, since there's no people up there. So Mission Control will be, able, will be able to communicate with the Alexa device for various commands, cabin lighting, uh, spacecraft status. I'm sure nothing crazy. It's not going to say, you know, Alexa. Whatever you're going to ask her to uh, initiate the TLI. Program. Yeah, they're not going to do that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Maybe in the future, but I don't know if. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if even I would. Even if it were good, I don't know. Something about just pushing yeah. a button to make sure, rather than uh, <laughs> yeah. Alexa initiate translunar injection. Okay, initiating <laughs> deorbit burn. So. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's exciting. This, I mean, I keep saying exci it's exciting. It's because it, it is. I mean, this because thing is it huge. Is. It, it, uh, it just this is, is happening. And this is no longer a paper rocket. This is no and longer rendering. Anybody who's anybody who so. might wonder, we will be just as giddy and as excited for Starship launches. So, because oh, um, they could be hugely important for the because Starship is part of the Artemis program. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, see, the there's program. also going to be a, uh, I believe there's going to be a laser communications demo on this mission as well. Here's a good uh, yeah, outline of a basic profile for, the, for um, the flight profile. So you can kind of see it goes into the distant retrograde orbit out here and comes back in. Each time there's two primary burns on the way out. One thing I did learn in one of the press conferences is if once they do the TLI, they have a, a critical burn. I, they have they might have the terms differently, but they have a critical burn that um, oh gosh, I think if they if the engine doesn't work on the first swing by of the moon, they might be able to do some mission objectives and come back home. Likewise, it's okay. less if they can't get into the distant retrograde orbit. It's still not a complete loss of vehicle because they can probably still make it their way back home, but a lot sure. less. Um, objectives we've been met, but apparently, once they de uh, get out of the distant retrograde orbit and do that second lunar flyby on the way back home, if that engine doesn't work during that, they said it was a loss of mission, loss of spacecraft. Interesting. Meaning Interesting. it'll probably be flung out in into deep space if it doesn't fly on that yeah. one. So that is kind of scary, but you want to make sure these things work. Now, to be fair, this engine is fired, the one that is on Artemis. Is previously flown, believe it or not. It is a former yeah. Space Shuttle Orbital Maneuvering System engine. It's fi it's been used, what, 50 times? Something like that? Oh. So, oh, yeah, yeah, it, it's ex exactly. It's, <laughs> there, let me, uh, I'll, I'll exactly make... what you see behind me here. Yeah, where he's pointing uh, there. Is, that's this is, that. That is, this is essentially what. <laughs> that's the main engine of Artemis, right? Uh, of the uh, yeah. uh, Orion spacecraft, right there. So, back here. Um, so yeah, um, so that is the scary part, and I'm trying to remember what day that comes, but that will be all eyes watching, because if it doesn't come back, they won't be able to test the heat shield, all the other stuff that's right. primary mission number one is to test the heat shield. <laughs> so, But this is why you test. This you know, is I mean, why this you is, test. This is exactly why you have these these flights, uh, and, and you know, obviously these critical phases of flight. Uh, you know, you got to risk losing your spacecraft, uh, especially with an uncrewed mission like yeah. you know, sometimes this is, this is the It'll be very interesting because I know during the Apollo program, not the latter ones, but the earlier ones, I believe they designed the mission profile to where if there was an engine burn problem, that they would be able to, this is not entirely true, but like on the way out to the moon, if they had an engine problem or whatever, they, the free return trajectory, you know, Apollo 13. But I don't think some, I don't think all the missions essentially put themselves on a free return trajectory. Uh, that being said, Every single time, every single mission that orbited the moon, they did have one critical point where if the engine didn't light, it was a loss of mission, and that was the burn to get out of lunar orbit. So it's yeah. the same thing. You know, it's scary, but that's the risk that is at the least risk you take going out the risk to another airplane. Now, body. to be fair, at least if you're orbiting the moon, you know, you have time to, you know, figure out what went wrong, maybe even use auxiliary engines. Um, in the case of yeah. Orion, but the Apollo spacecraft didn't have an auxiliary engines. They only had the one big service module engine. 
But when you're flying by on that last pass of the moon, you got one shot to get it right. Um, so if it doesn't light, you can't even use the auxiliary engines around um, the, around the right. main engine of Orion. So unless I'm wrong about that, I don't know. But it sounds like it's very, it's time critical, time sensitive. So absolutely. But yeah, there is also going to be a laser communication experiment somewhere here, if I recall correctly. Um, maybe I'm thinking of something else. There's going to be a number of communications uh, evaluations with the near space network and the deep space network. But I thought they were going to be testing mm -hmm. out uh, a laser communication technique. And laser communications, what, too, so. it, for those who don't know, and Colin, you can correct me if I end up being getting part of this wrong. Laser communications would allow high bit rate um, data being sent back from large distances or any distance for that matter. But think of it like fiber optics, you know, <laughs> versus, you know, the idea. At least. Yeah. 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 With, with, with no tube, obviously, but it yeah. requires extreme position on, you know, lining up with radio. You could just blast the radio waves and it spreads out and any old dish will catch it for the most part. I mean, paraphr simplifying things, <laughs> but, but with, a, <laughs> with the laser, you have to basically line up the laser beam with the receiver. And I'm not sure what the margin of error is for that, but that's what makes it more difficult um, for communications yeah. to, to do, get all that stuff to work. But if it does work, you can now conceivably have HD live HD from the moon. So instead of having that grainy yeah. that grainy Apollo, you know, uh, in the Armstrong walking on the moon, you could have totally HD like we're watching people float on the International Space Station. So, yeah, which would be which I mean we we can't conceive even we can't even think about how how cool <laughs> yeah. that'll look you know yeah, I mean yeah. I mean really with the only grainy footage that we have from yeah. the Apollo era yeah um, now so. now I don't know if that'll all be established and available during that first Artemis landing it might be I don't know but I either way it'll probably still be better than the Apollo era technology yeah, I would imagine but I would don't imagine. be surprised if we still get the first uh, pictures back from the surface of the moon in 2025 or 2026 and it's still 480 or something like that 480p yeah, there you go. so <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean you know all these people are like how come it's not how come it's so blurry it's because it's so far away and the data is sometimes it's in space <laughs> we're spoiled we're spoiled in the 21st century <laughs> Yeah, really um, but it is going to be nice. It's going to be exciting. Um, I'm just blabbering now. Is there anything else you want to look at regarding uh, this flight test kit? Anybody else have any questions about things? Yeah, let us know. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. It's a lot. It's 10 years in the making, depending on how you're counting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's for the most part, SLS has been in development since 2011. The only thing that's been in development, not counting the, the capsule before that, was really the five segment solid rocket motor. And that was for the Ares sure. one program. So that's the holdover from the constellation program. SLS is not like Ares five. Um, it's other than they look similar visually on the Looks concept. A little art. Similar to Ares 5, but <laughs> but yeah. I even point out too, they even look, even though it's similar shuttle hardware, there's so much new in this rocket. It is a totally new rocket. I mean, yeah. the boosters, I think there's some the, some of the, um, mixtures are different. I think some of the casings are different. Um, the software's different. Um, same thing with the engines. Even though they're flight proven for the shuttle engines, they got new new chip uh, brains. Essentially, they're rated for higher thrust. They're flying a new body too. The flying I mean, shuttle yeah. and, and SLS are completely different oh, yeah. animals. I mean, know, so. they have to deal with higher heating. Um, so they yeah. had, for shuttle, they had three clustered away from the solid rocket boosters. For this, it's four clustered next to the solid rocket boosters. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the external tank, it looks like it's from the space shuttle. And that's again, just because of the foam. It's structurally different because it's got a whole, it's got all kinds of different flight dynamics it's got to go through. So yeah. it's easy to say, oh, it's shuttle derived. It should have been cheaper. No, I mean, that's, no, no, that's no. what, that's how it was advertised, I'm sure. But it shouldn't have been. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that's not even counting all the tools and machinery that had to be updated to build stuff. Yeah, and the testing had to go under, uh, yeah. you know, undergo a huge, so, huge modification. Mishu and, and New yeah. Orleans had to go under huge modifications. So, um, so yeah, we, we hear shuttle derived, but that's a very loose term. Very loose, uh, yeah. absolutely. Um, so. Heck, I even think the upper stage is minorly a uh, minor derivative of the Delta II cryogenic uh, upper stage, yeah. or the Delta IV, or the Delta cryogenic upper stage. I don't know how much they changed on that, but I think they changed a few things. So, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. So <laughs> exciting times. Um, it is very exciting. Trying to think if there's anything else, but 
I think we're good. We're right about an hour, which isn't too bad. Longer than I thought we'd go tonight. Um, if anybody has any other questions in the chat, speak now or forever hold your peace. Um, let me go ahead and turn that off. There we go. Yeah, there's a lot of other things coming up in the coming in the coming days. Um, thanks everybody for joining in. I appreciate it. It looks like we had a, a good crowd here tonight. Thanks for the comment. Thanks Ziggy and everybody for commenting. Um, thank you, Colin, for for joining and being a wonderful co-host. And again, congratulations on your engagement. <laughs> um, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, thanks for having me. Yeah, as always. And then of course, again tomorrow. I still got a couple things to work on for it, but tomorrow expect the a video over the Commercial Lunar Payload Services program. Um, hold on, I'm getting a uh, YouTube error here. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, we will execute. Uh, hopefully, that fixes itself. Anyways, hopefully you guys can. Yeah, <laughs> everything seems fine on my end. So hopefully you guys are hearing things. If not, you know, I guess <laughs> it'll be an early buy. But <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, Black Ginger, uh, good show, guys. Thanks, Black Ginger. Um, anyway, so, so yeah, tomorrow I've got the uh, clips video, commercial lunar payload services video coming out. I'm going to do my best to try to get a video, a 2D animation, like I have done in the past for SLS. That is a secondary priority from other things. I'm also working on a mission overview for SLS. So I've got a lot of videos regarding that. I'm working on a bunch of infographics. Some of them are modifications from stuff I've done before. And uh, yeah, I don't know when I'm driving down from Kansas City to Florida, but it will be sometime, obviously not this, com not this coming week, but next week. Um, so I'm hoping to do a live stream if possible next week, if you're available here. Absolutely. And if Absolutely. everything works out, it might just depend I might be able to do a live stream on the Sunday before launch. I'm not sure how all that would work out since I might be at the Kennedy Space Center press site, but I'll be there for Space Flight Insider and I don't know what cell signals are going to be like. So the stream before... Busy is the word. It's busy. So the, <laughs> the, the Sunday before launch may or may not have a stream. So don't count on it, but it might happen. Um, so yeah. That's what's coming up. Um, obviously, stick with Orbital Velocity on, uh, on Twitter. I stick to my Twitter account, Colin's Twitter account. We'll give you all the happenings, all the going downs, goings down with uh, that works. I don't know um, with SLS and Orion. And uh, and thanks again. If you haven't already, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. As I always like to say, be sure to like that, uh, launch that like button into orbit. <laughs> um, yeah, so for now, we'll plan on next week, unless something goes, unless something happens, next week, same time, 7.30 uh, Central, 8.30 Eastern. Yeah, Perfect. anything else you want to add? Nope, we're just, uh, we're on SLS watch down here. It's SLS really exciting watch. Time, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep you guys posted as, uh, you know, as soon as we know more. Yep. It's exciting times. All right, well, thanks again for watching, and until next time, at Astra. <laughs>